Hi everyone, it's Key with the Broody Bantam. And now everybody's like, who? Key with the Broody Bantam, we haven't heard from you in forever. I apologize, I know I've been MIA for a little while and if you follow my blog, and I'll link it here in the description below, I wrote a post about why I've been missing and it's basically because my daughter, AJ, the little one, my little farm helper, was diagnosed with eosinophilic esophagitis. What? <laughs> EOE. It's basically a disorder in her esophagus that makes it a little bit difficult for her to eat. I'm not going to get um, too in-depth in this video about her disorder. If you want to know more information, definitely look it up, EOE, eosinophilic esophagitis, and check out that blog, and there's a little bit more about it. And I will make a video about AJ's condition, like a separate video where I talk about what's going on, how we realized she had it, and what we're doing. But right now, it's really early. She just got her diagnosis on the 8th of June. And I have been like just so in my head about it, trying to research and research and figure out what's going on and what I can do for her. But this is kind of like um, the early phase and it's like a hurry up and wait. Like we get information and then we wait three weeks and we get a little bit more. And then, so I don't have any definites and I don't want to put out a whole bunch of this might be what we're doing and this might not be. So when I have more information, I'll make a whole separate video about that. But I'm sure you're wondering, or maybe not, maybe you've forgotten about me, um, what's going on here at the homestead. So I'm going to let you know today. Come along. Here's our mini orchard, if you want to call it that. We're growing some strawberries right here. They're doing okay. This is our gala apple tree. And as you can see, June beetles in the sun have completely had their way with that. But... Um, it's not a stick anymore, so I'll take it. Here's our Meyer lemon. Kind of same thing. It's kind of caught a beating, but it did bloom again. And now we've got these on there. And I don't know if that's just where the bloom died or if that's going to be a little lemon. So stay tuned and see what happens with that. Here's our Stella cherry tree. And, I mean, the June beetles just demolish it. There's nothing left. You can see some right there. So, hopefully that comes back next year. This is our Granny Smith, which is probably the best looking out of all of them, but the leaves are still like curled up. So, we'll see. Um, I, and I'll get some mulch or some chips around that, but I haven't yet. This one's in a pot because it goes back in the house during the winter. We don't live in the right zone to just have one. These are our blackberries, which I don't know if the sun did that or something ate them, but we do have some that are starting to turn. So we might get some of those. And I didn't plant those. I don't know if they're wild or whoever lived here before us planted them, but we're, we're letting that happen. <laughs> yeah, it's the pool wall. We've got, I think these are called ditch lilies or day lilies or something. You always see them growing in ditches. Ray is in his room. We haven't let him out yet because I haven't gotten my other chores done. Our pool is still a swamp. We're having some electrical issues, so that's our swamp. My husband recently cut the grass, so it looks nice back here. We'll go to look, Omelet and Shirley. They've learned how to escape, and that's what they do. Oh, new around the swamp pool elephant ears which when we don't let the goats out grow and look pretty nice <laughs> I like them this one here is probably the biggest bestest one here's the garden or you know leaves and weeds or grass and weeds it's gotten over overgrown my potatoes are back there you know my grape is doing good if you can see it right there it was way too hot for lettuce so it is all super bitter that's there and basically oh hi Shirley basically um the only thing left surviving there's some carrots in there that you can't see is watermelon and cucumbers and weeds there's a lot of work I need to do in here but it's either been raining like crazy or hot as heck um i've got some corns but they're they're a little tardy to the party so i don't know if they're gonna 
day. I hear you, Capri. And then, of course, I have some rainbow cherry tomatoes and some purple Cherokee tomatoes that may or may not come up. My blueberries have been buried in the weeds, but they didn't do much. And of course, there's that pokeberry coming up nicely behind our fence that I can't do anything about because it's behind and in between two fences. So the last time y'all saw marzipan was like the video where he was born. And here he is now, a handsome five, almost six week old buckling. And he's acting every bit of a buck. <laughs> he has got his girlfriend here, Capri, and he loves her a lot. Um, there's Mama Millie, as always. And um, Ma uh, Toffee, Mars's mommy, beautiful. She's such a pretty goat, she's so shiny. Um, so that's kind of the goat pen. For a while, we had actually moved the ducks over here because they were kind of assaulting the chicken's water bowl situation, and it worked for a little while. It wasn't bad, but they ate up all of the goat's grass so and made their water messy too. Less, but still, so we we did move them. Hi, hi, see girl. You want me to milk you? I know. I'll do it. So we did move them back over with the chickens and they're happier there. But here's the goats. Let's go over to the chickens. We had a lot of broodies this season and we had a lot of hatches, but we did not have a lot of chicks to survive. We had one chick out of all the eggs we incubated, chicks that we bought, and um, and eggs that have hatched under breeding moms. We've had two survivors from the chicks that we bought. We have our rooster that's not going to stay long. He doesn't even have a name because we're not allowed to have roosters. And he's here. And he's a Rhode Island red rooster. And then Lucky, that little chick right there. It's supposed to be a frizzled Easter egg, although she doesn't look frizzled. She um, hatched and she is the lone survivor. And we named her Lucky before we knew she was the lone survivor, so I guess that's that. Hello. So now that we have two Cayugas, because Quackers hatched a baby, I cannot tell them apart. I think that's it, and I think it's a girl. But at the same time, that could be quackers. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> we have cheese and aflac. But then we also have um, squeakers there. And um, I forget the, what kind of named hers. And that is how they get in and out. They jump up through that door. I'm going to have to put chicken wire over there. I'm here to feed y'all. <laughs> but here's our flock. We now have almost as many ducks as we do chicken. And this is Darkwing. I can tell the difference between him because he has a, um, a crest. It is near impossible to tell the difference between Joey and Quackers. We have five meat birds left. And these ones are super active. We're growing them a lot slower with a lot less feed and a lot less fattening of feed. And they look so much healthier than our others. And I am super glad for that. And after this batch, I don't think I'll be doing any more right off because with all that's going on, I just don't really have time right now. But I did, excuse me, Rooster, I did really appreciate the process. Oh my gosh! See, it's the chicken shuffle. They won't let me get to the bucket because everybody's so greedy. This is an old paint tray. The meat birds are like, oh, turn! Oh, look at this. Listen to that sound. But like drumming. That's how greedy they are. And due to the excessive rain, we are having a crazy fly problem 
in the coop, which I've never had. I'm just gonna sprinkle some for the baby. So I've got a fly bag in there, and it is disgustingly full of flies. I've cleaned the coop, I don't know how many times, because when they get in there and they're wet, it makes it stink. I've never had a smell in my coop before, so this is all new to me. The deep litter method worked perfectly for me last year with no issues. But this year, it has given me plenty of difficulty. Hi, Lucky! Hi, Lucky! That's kind of the update to what's been going on here. I really do want to get back into filming more regularly and keeping everybody up to date with what's going on with us. It's just been so crazy because I've been so obsessed with trying to figure out what's going on with AJ and getting answers and things like that. Um, but I do want to keep y'all posted on the journey. What's going on with AJ? What's going on with me? What's going on with the homestead? So please bear with me and try to be patient. It might not be entirely regular right now, but I will try to get back into it because I really do enjoy this. Um, so like I said, go click the link below and read that post if you want to know more about what's going on with AJ. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy flocking.